Well, here's your answer. Your parents didn't love you. But here, let me heal you. Yo, what's up everybody? It's your boy Reggie here, back with you for another video. Welcome back to the House of Animation. And in today's video, we're gonna be doing a continuation, a part two, if you will, of a video that I did early on. You saw the thumbnail, so you already know what we gonna be talking about. We gonna be talking about one of my favorite cartoon movies of all time, and that's Kung Fu Panda. So in one of my previous videos, I talked about Tai Lung and how as an adult, I really loved his character story. Story. I talked about how his story is an example of what great expectations and pressures, especially from a parent, could do to a child. I love Tai Long's story, and although he's my favorite Kung Fu Panda villain, Lord Shen is definitely Kung Fu Panda's best villain, and mostly because how his story and actions directly impact Poe. But before we get into that, please make sure to comment, like, and subscribe if you like this type of content. And without any further ado, let's get into it. So to start off, I just gotta say, I feel like we should give the Kung Fu Panda people credit because with the first movie coming off of it being hugely successful and possibly one of the greatest cartoon villains of all time when it comes to Tai Lung, it could have been so easy just to make another movie and make another bad guy similar to him. And they did not do that. Lord Shen and Tai Lung are similar because they're both bad guys and they're both menacing and they're both really good at Kung Fu, but they are entirely entirely different in my opinion. Where Tai Lung and his fighting and personality was a lot more brutal and it showed a lot more ferocity and strength and intensity. Shen is a little bit more different. With his fighting style, it's more stylish, more finesse. It includes manipulation, deception, and being able to pull out weapons and tricks to be able to confuse your opponent. In addition to their fighting styles, I would say Tai Lung's story is different because he started off good and then turned bad while Shen was bad from the beginning. See, Shen's story to me is one of fear, one of not being able to let go of the past and look towards his future. To me, Shen's story is a cautionary tale of what happens when you can't let go of your old self and look towards the self that you could be. See, Shen's story starts off in a good place. He came from a family of peacocks which ruled over China. His his family brought peace and joy to everyone in the land because they had the invention of fireworks. But with this invention that his parents used to bring joy to people, Shen saw that he could use that power for more sinister purposes. His parents seeing this darkness within Shen asked for some advice from a soothsayer, an old goat, who basically told them that if Shen continued down this path, that he would be defeated by a warrior black and white. And that's where for me, this movie takes such a darker tone than the previous movie. Because we learn within the first five minutes that Shen was so worried about this future, so consumed with this outcome that he caused an entire genocide of a panda village. This man was so consumed by his future that he would do anything to avoid it. He went into a village and killed every single panda he could see. Man, woman, and child killed them all, not realizing that the very future that he was trying to avoid is the future that he himself caused. It's the living embodiment of that quote Ugwe had in the first movie. One often meets his destiny on the road he takes to avoid it. After causing this genocide, Shen went back home and saw his parents' face and realized that they were horrified by his actions. And to punish him for what he did, they banished him. With Shen feeling so betrayed and confused why his parents didn't love him and why they would kick him out of his ancestral home, he vowed that he would come back and get revenge on everybody. These very actions that Shen caused led to Po being separated from his family and being found by his dad and then eventually 
becoming the Dragon Warrior. So when Poe and Shen meet for the first time and Poe realizes that Shen had something to do with his past, Poe becomes consumed by his past trying to figure it out as well. These guys' stories mirror each other so much while they're such a reflection of each other. This is why I say Poe and Shen are such great counterbalances to each other and why Shen is Kung Fu Panda's best villain because his actions directly relate to Poe. There's a scene in here that I really think expresses Shen's character so much. It's when him and the soothsayer were talking with each other. Shen is talking about his ambitions and how he wants to conquer all of China and the soothsayer is pleading to him, begging him not to go through with this for the sake of his parents. And when that happens, Shen tells us how he really feels. It is time to stop this madness. Why on earth would I do that? So your parents can rest in peace. My parents hated me. Do you understand? They wronged me. And I will make it right. They loved you. They loved you so much that having to send you away killed them. The dead exist in the past, and I must attend to the future. You see that scene, and it's like you start to understand Shen a little bit more. It's like he's trying to prove to himself, but more so prove to his parents that they were wrong about him. It's like he's doing all this to try and fill that hole in his heart that was made the day his parents banished him. The day that he felt like his parents abandoned him, and the day he feels like his parents didn't love him anymore. There's even a scene when Shen and Po face off against each other and Shen taunts Po, knowing that he has PTSD, he uses that and uses every advantage he can think of to try and kill Po. Tell me what happened that night. What night? That night. Ah, oh, that night. Yes, I was there. Yes, I watched as your parents abandoned you. It's a terrible thing. I believe it went something like this. You can see that Shen is trying to rattle Poe, distract him, use everything to his advantage to try and get Poe out of his head. And to do that, he even says this here. No more running, Shen. So it seems. Now, answers. Oh, you want to know so badly. <laughs> you think knowing will heal you, huh? Fill some crater in your soul. Well, here's your answer. Your parents didn't love you. But here, let me heal you. That line caught my attention so much because when Shen says it, you know he's not talking to Poe. He's talking about himself. He's projecting his emotions onto Poe because he's the one who felt abandoned. He was the one who felt unwanted and unloved. Shen is so stuck in the past, he lets his future be defined by it, not being able to let go. After hearing this and then being in the care of the soothsayer, Poe was almost like Shen, letting the past dictate his emotions and how he felt moving forward. He was almost consumed by it as well but it was the soothsayer it was the old goat who helped poe and gave him the message that shen was so closed off to hearing your story may not have such a happy beginning but that doesn't make you who you are it is the rest of your story who you choose to be. So after hearing those words and understanding who he is, Poe then takes us to the best scene and honestly, I think the whole trilogy. When it's just Poe standing on a piece of driftwood in the middle of the ocean, going up against Shen's whole army, going up against cannonballs, when Poe was able to find his peace, ain't nobody gonna tell me this scene wasn't straight gas. My man Poe is catching these cannonballs, redirecting them, throwing them right back at his ships, leaving Shen speechless to that final moment where he catches that cannonball, gets turned around in a circle and redirects it right back at Shen. My God, ain't nobody gonna tell me this shit wasn't heat. Now with Shen's army 
decimated, everything taken away from him, his hopes, his ambitions, all of it gone to dust, and then Poe's just there standing over him. We get this final amazing scene from Shen. How did you? How did you do it? Did you find peace? I took away your parents. Everything. I, I scarred you for life. See, that's the thing, Shen. Scars heal. No, they don't. Wounds heal. Oh, yeah. What do scars do? They fade, I guess? I don't care what scars do. You should, Shen. You gotta let go of that stuff from the past, because it just doesn't matter. The only thing that matters is what you choose to be now. Shen's voice actor delivered these lines so amazingly. It's like you can hear the pain and cracks in Shen's voice. It's clear to see that he's asking not for Poe's sake, but he's asking for himself. After everything was taken away from him, he took away Poe's family, his culture, the life that he could have had. How was Poe able to find peace? And after Poe tells him, he just couldn't accept the answer. With Shen not being able to accept this answer, answer that Poe gives him they have their final fight Shen is desperate to change his destiny determined to make sure that he doesn't get defeated by this warrior of black and white and when these two are fighting and Shen realizes he's about to get killed being a victim of his own creation he did something that was so poetic to me where he decides to take his destiny into his own hands this to me was the one moment Shen wasn't being afraid of destiny wasn't being afraid of of the future he decided that if he wanted to go out it's gonna be because of him to me shen's story is a really sad one it's one of fear one of pain and one of struggle the struggle of not being able to let go of the past and look towards the future i said this earlier before but i feel like shen is really poe's best villain and where we see the most growth from the panda shen's story to me is a cautionary tale it tells you that your past doesn't define you your past actions don't make you who you are but it's who you choose to be your future actions is what defines you so i really hope you guys like today's video and let me know in the comments if there's any other cartoon movies you guys want me to do reviews of but with that i got nothing left so peace